Hello and welcome to Rathod's IELTS. Today in this session, we are going to see Kerala fights of 20th April 2024. So let's get started with our discussion. So I want to say two important things before starting this analysis. So there are many beginners who started their preparation and they started reading newspaper, right? So I'm getting many queries like how can we select articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. So here I want to give you two tips. So one will be like you have to buy hard the syllabus. Like what are the topics you are present in GS1, GS2, GS3 and GS4. Because sometimes you can see those keywords which are present in your syllabus directly in newspaper titles. Okay. So that you can pick those articles and those articles will be obviously they are relevant from our examination. And second one is you have to see previous questions. So if you see previous questions of both mains and prelims, then you will understand how UPSC is asking questions from the topic. So that if there is any relevant topic which you can see, like whenever you are seeing a newspaper, you will understand that that topic is also relevant. You have to read that type of articles as well. For example, places in news, for example, indices, if there is any organization in news, so you can get questions. So like that, you will be getting understanding and you will be picking up the right articles in your preparation so that you will be not wasting much time and this is called as smart work, okay? And now let us see the front page. So this is front page of our Hindu and this article is relevant. So here title says, voters brave heat wave first phase has over 62 percentage of turnout so as the first phase of this Lok Sabha elections done and in this Lok Sabha elections what is that voter turnout that is 62 percentage of people who have this right to vote the caste they vote and here the problem is because of heat wave so even though there is heat wave so 62 percent of people they cast their vote so here keyword is heat wave and this heat wave word which is seen highly in news. For example, heat waves in Europe, European countries and especially heat waves in India, right? So, there is a high chance of getting question regarding this heat wave, okay? So, now let us see the dimensions. So, I will tell you like the dimensions and one more thing is whenever I am giving dimensions, so you have to work on those dimensions. Because if I am teaching age and everything means it will be like more than 3 to 4 hours. So that much time you will be not giving okay for me to cover current affairs. So I will be giving you the simply dimensions and if possible I will be discussing dimensions for some articles. Okay. So this article is talking about heat wave. So this heat wave is important from your GS paper 1 under geography. So I will tell you the dimensions that you have to see from geography point of view. So first you have to see what is the definition of heat wave. So whenever you are seeing definition you have to see like authenticated definition. For example according to IMD Indian Meteorological Department or for example world meteorological organization so like that you have to take standard definition which is given by authorized organization and you have to see like what are the causes of this heat wave and you have to see what will be the impact so in this impact you can connect like different subjects in our syllabus for example you have to see like impact on economy economy of the country Okay, for example, if you see even this economy, we can see economy at the national level, economy at the state level, economy at the local level, economy at the individual level. And if you move forward, you have to see economy at global level, how it is going to be affected, right? And because of this heat wave, what is the impact on our environment and ecology? So, in environment and ecology, you will be studying like impact on flora impact on fauna and impact on humans like that okay so it will comes under your biodiversity topic and here you have to see like impact on health of people so health which is part of our gs paper too and impact on geography okay geography of that area and impact on society point of view 
so like that you have to connect different subjects which are present in our syllabus okay where you are seeing impact you have to see this in this way so that you will be getting many points and many dimensions and here there is also one more important thing like what are the measures can be taken so in this measures once again we can divide it into individual level at an individual level what are the steps that you can take and you have to take like from government side what are the measures can be taken by the government and on another side we have like IMD, WMO and some private weather forecasting agencies. So what can be the role played by this weather forecasting? Okay, by this weather forecasting agencies. Okay. And let us see another subject point of view. So these are the dimensions just only from your geography. Clear? And from GS paper 3 point of view, we will be studying this environment and ecology. So actually one important reason for this heat wave is climate change. So here we can think dimensions from this climate change point of view. Like what are the reasons for this climate change which is causing this heat wave. Like for example, increasing of global warming and increasing of carbon dioxide emissions. Okay. Increasing of vehicular usage. Like that. And next one is here to address this climate change. What are the measures can be taken? Okay. For example, we can increase carbon sinks. So this is one kind of measure like that you have to see some measures. So this is only from your environment and ecology point of view. And actually recently one current affairs regarding this heat wave is. So heat wave is decided or included in disaster. So from disaster management point of view also it is very important. Okay from disaster management also it is very important. And again this G disaster management comes under our GS paper 3 and it is for only mains. So from mains point of view you have to see like what are the disaster management steps. Like preventive measures and during disaster after disaster steps. Okay regarding this heat wave. So all these are the important dimensions that you have to see from heat wave point of view. And now we are going to see this article in detail. So before seeing this article, I want to make a small announcement. Please give me around 1 to 2 minutes to tell about the announcement. Okay. So we in Rathors IES, we came up with this very important and interesting policy. That is 50% refund with a written agreement. If you are not clearing even your prelims. So what is this? It is very simple. So we are launching our offline foundation course. Okay, offline foundation course in Hyderabad at Ashok Nagar. And our institute is there at pillar number 36 and especially exactly to Vijaya Medicals and it is on third and fourth floor. Okay, so we are launching this offline foundation. And after this offline foundation course, after writing prelims, if you are not clearing prelims, you are going to give you 50% of amount refund. And if you clear prelims, entire guidance for mains interview will be given and will be assured by this Rathod Sahis Academy. So we are going to have prelims, mains and interview guidance under this foundation course. Okay, of 2025. And why you are that much confidence? Because if you are watching our analysis daily, you will be knowing about our content. So how much content we are giving and we are giving like in-depth analysis, no one and nowhere in India they are providing. That is the one thing. And next one is, every day you will be having 5 hours of classes. So in this 5 hours, we are going to cover 2 GS subjects daily. And after that, you have to stay in institute because we are providing free study space, that too with faculty support. So actually, if you join any coaching for UPSC, so they will be giving like 3 to 3 and a half hours of class every day, that's it. And they will be leaving you and there will be no one to bother like what you are doing, whether you are studying or not. 
but here we are making you to sit in the study space for five hours and in this five hours we are focusing on the revision of the topics that done in the morning and on that topics there will be daily practice test of prelims and means and there will be evaluation of your prelims and means and next one is we are also going to cover your ncrt in that study hours so that there is like exclusive and well planned study plan with us so that with a right study plan with the right approach with right guidance and with your dedication of course yes it is easy to clear your upsc examination and we will see like how will you not clear prelims if you are following all these things so you are going to have like 100% syllabus coverage because you are not taking classes every day only 3 hours we are going to take classes like more than 5 hours and as one is we are going to cover your pyqs of upsc examinations not only civil services but even other exams like defense etc and we are also going to focus on your mains previous questions of last two years and exclusively we are focusing on csat mains and written practice essay and ethics that will bring you the success in your mains okay and this one is one to one mentorship with faculty on every sunday and even there will be interaction with toppers so that they will be guide you in a right path and next one is you are also focusing on at least two years of contemporary current affairs so contemporary current affairs will will helps you like to expect like questions which are going to come in your prelims and mains okay and next one here is we are providing value added study material for your preparation along with current affairs compilation and one important thing here is we have a very less batch size of 70 students per a batch not more than that at any cost so that we can implement all these things in a very clear cut manner okay so if you want to take offline coaching so don't join blindly don't don't, don't join blindly see the content what they are providing and ask them for even demo videos okay so with that only you can go and join so please don't join blindly because many students they are facing problems after joining so this is reality and this is the truth i'm saying so believe me okay yes now let us move on and if you want to have this admission you can call us on this number 8074767513 okay and even that is whatsapp number and telegram number you can message me and you can talk to me directly because i am the one of the founder of rathore sis yes now let us see the notes part so let us see the first article and it will be taking around 10 minutes okay please bear me for next 10 minutes so that i will be covering each and everything regarding heat wave from prelims and mains point of view okay so why it is in news first so even though there is heat wave around 62.37 percentage of auto turnout had been recorded so it is one success that we can see and if you see here the voting percentage is likely to go up when reports from all polling stations are obtained so as of now the exact data from all polling station had been not got but even the overall there is around 62.37 percentage of voter turnout had been recorded and if you see the poll body also commented that high voter turnout despite the heat wave despite the heat wave yes we can see there is very high voter turnout and next one is polling has been completed for 10 states and union territories in this first phase so which are those states that is tamil nadu uttarakhand andaman nicobar lakshadweep and north eastern states so in these states yes voting had been done and if you are talking about heat waves so now we are going to see just heat waves and what is impact causes everything that you need to know as an upsc aspirant okay so now let us see what is this heat wave so what is the definition given by indian meteorological department it is very important so imd says that in plains in plains what should be the maximum temperature that is more than or equal to 40 degree centigrade and in hilly regions maximum temperature is more than or equal to 30 degree centigrade and additionally heat wave can be declared if maximum temperature is more than like 45 degree centigrade and maximum of more than 47 degree centigrade so this is called as a severe heat wave 
Okay, so there is a different criteria for plains and hilly regions. So this is the thing that you have to see. And if you are talking about what are the causes of increased heat wave nowadays. So because of climate change. So even PLOS climate report says that heat waves are becoming more frequent. Not only frequent that is they are coming like every moment. It is not like that but even intensity is also increasing. That means the temperature is increasing and also it is becoming lethal. Lethal means very dangerous globally. And over 90% of India could be impacted by abnormal temperatures. So this is causing because of climate change. Because of climate change, we are having abnormal temperature. And if you are talking, talking about this, uh, what will be the impact of these heat waves? So first one is, it is having impact on economy. Whenever these heat waves are happening frequently, are occurring heat, uh, frequently, then it is affecting the very range, high range of economic sectors. For example, there will be reduction in the working days and even livelihood of poor and muscle farmers will be get affected. And whenever there is high heat, the productivity of agriculture will also be cut down. And even the productivity of daily wage earners will be also getting down because of heat wave. So these are having like negative impact on our economy. So these will be having negative impact on our economy. And let us see what will be the impact on humans. So because of increasing of temperature and especially whenever there is increasing of temperature, normally people they do not have proper awareness like how much temperature etc. So because of this, they will be not taking proper mitigation measures. So because of this heat wave also that will lead to increasing of mortality. So for example, you might have heard this word called as sunstroke. Okay, sunstroke is caused because of this heat wave itself. So the sunstroke is one of the important reason for increased dehydration in the body. So because of this dehydration that will be lead to the death of mortality in the severe cases. And next one is in 2019 analysis of Tata Center for Development and along with the University of Chicago. So they predicted that by 2100th year, there will be 1.5 million people per year, they will be died. Why? Because of climate change induced heat waves. And next one is what will be the impact on livestock? So according to this Colonel University report, it said that because of increasing of heat stress, it could also decrease milk output. So as you all know that India is the second largest milk producer in the world, right? So here it is going to affect the milk production of the milk output. So that we are going to see there will be decreasing of dairy, okay, dairy sector and dairy productivity by around 25 percentage by 2100th year. So there will be one fourth fall down of this dairy sector in India because of this heat wave. And this one is heat wave is unavoidably increasing the electricity demand. So when you are feeling heat, yes, you will be having like more demand for electricity. You want to use fan, you want to use AC or cooler, etc. Right? And even whenever there is power cuts, you will be using inverters. So further because of this developments of uh, science and technology, whenever we are using these inverters, again there is increased demand for electricity. Right? So there will be increase in the demand for electricity. And especially in the north, it will be like 13 percentage greater. And it will be like in the month of May, it will be 30 percentage in month of April. There will be increase in the demand by 13 percentage and in month of May it will be around 30, 30 percentage of increasing of demand of electricity. Because in May month we will be seeing like extreme temperature. So even though it is April, now it is today is 20th April, so we are feeling very hot. Even though in Hyderabad it is raining outside, we will be feeling like sweaty sweaty. Okay. And now let us see what will be the impact on food security. So here tree mortality, 
because of very high temperature trees will die and even agriculture production will be decreased and even we can see like increasing of drought disasters and even that will lead to conditions called as famines and rapid decrease in the food production that is caused by heat related labor productivity and even there will be negative impact on the health of humans and as well as food production. So this is one negative impact and especially in tropical areas, okay, which are the tropical areas? So this is equator, this is 30 degrees north, this is 30 degrees south, this is 60 degrees south and this is 60 degrees north. So the region between 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south. So this region is tropical region. And 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north and 30 degrees south to 60 degrees south. It is called as temperate region. Okay. So only this region is called as tropical region. So in these tropical region because of decreasing of food productivity. Because so this tropical region will be receiving more more sunlight that is leading to the high temperature here compared to that of temperate regions. So here because of this what happened whenever agriculture productivity is decreasing that will automatically leads to increasing of rise of the food price and there is also decreasing of household income because it is affecting the productivity of labor and even because of this increasing of food and because of increasing of decrease or less income of households that will lead to like increasing of poverty and hunger okay and even climate related fatalities that is mortality will be increasing in this tropical regions and this one is there will be also impact on workers okay so actually you know that India's population depends upon industries like agriculture construction for living and these workers they will be badly impacted in 2030 according to the reports and next one is weaker sections to be affected in particular. For example, here greenhouse gases, aerosol emissions, they are drastically reduced globally. And the climate science community which has documented overwhelming evidence that the severe events like heat waves, they are projected to grow more intense and more frequent and longer length in the future. So in this way here we are going to have a very huge impact because of this heat waves. And now let us see how we can mitigate this heat wave. So this mitigation will be important from your mains. So wherever it is important from prelims and mains I will be letting you know so that you will be having a clear cut clarity and you can vis visualize like how the questions can be asked in your UPSC. Okay. So now let us see the mitigation plan. So first one is we have to come up with heat wave action plan. So especially the regions, we have to identify the regions where there is heat wave and that heat wave zones, we have to implement this heat wave action plan so that we can decrease the negative impact of this heat wave and we can focus on effective disaster adaptation techniques and we can focus on robust disaster management regulations as well. And this one is government need to prioritize creating a very long term action plan such that we can protect people, animals, wildlife because heat related deaths can be avoided. And this one is we can also focus on the Sindai framework for disaster risk reduction. So here we have to implement that Sindai framework. So whenever you are writing an answer regarding disaster management, try to incorporate the Sindai framework for sure. It is very important. Okay. So this can be implemented effectively with the state talking the lead and other stakeholders. They have to share the responsibility of implementing this. And this one is we have to implement even climate action plans. So whenever we are implementing this climate action plans, we can promote equitable growth and we can also focus on ecological sustainability so, and we have to focus on even national action plan for climate change so all these things they have to be implemented in a true spirit it should not be on only on paper so it should be implemented on true spirit and this one is not only should nature-based solutions 
but even we have to take other steps like intergenerational fairness and even we have to include moral studies regarding environment in the schooling itself in education we have to make them as a part and which one is even we can focus on this early warning system and public awareness so to reduce the number of fatalities caused by this heat waves and we have to raise public awareness through print or electronic media or social media and even government can take some steps like providing of heat proof shelters in summer regions in some areas and we have to make like public water available so i think may you know or not so in many areas in this telangana state and even hyderabad i found like uh, there are many areas where they are keeping pots and trying to provide drinking water to people and they are saying that this is chalivendram so it is one of the important step that we have to take because water is very important and we have to consume as much as water in the summer season to avoid dehydration so we can make like availability of water drinking water everywhere where there is like a public crowd will be there and next one is we have to implement a forestation programs in this rural areas and as well as in urban areas for example do you know this miyawaki method and regarding this miyawaki method in 2019 or 2020 the question asked in upsc prelims so miyawaki method is nothing but a forestation method in urban areas and we took this method from japan okay we took this method from japan so it is also very important i covered one previous question here yeah and next one is we have to recognize heat waves as natural disaster and we have to recognize heat waves as a form of natural disaster because we cannot acknowledge this fact because it is having like severe catastrophe or severe impact and as one is we have to focus on sustainable cooling especially for this residential and commercial buildings and we have to focus on passive passive cooling technology and we have to focus on a popular technique for designing naturally ventilated structures so they are very important to combat this phenomena of urban heat island so this urban heat island itself it is one important topic in your geography so in simple urban heat island is nothing but whenever we are increasing like concrete structures asphalt structures for example roads are black in color so they will be absorbing as much as possible heat and they will be releasing during night time so because of this night time will be feeling very hot okay this is called as the concept of urban heat island and even in the third section of ar6 report of ipcc ipcc sixth panel report it suggested that the context of global warming ancient indian architecture designs that have utilized this technique can be applied for modern structures so for modern structure to decrease its heat waves we have to use some techniques and this one is we have to change dark roofs okay so normally if you see during summer season we used to do that okay i don't know whether you know this or not we used to paint our roof of the house with some cooling agents they will be like white color okay so that inside the home it will be like we will be feeling cool and this one is replace dark surfaces with lighter and more reflecting materials so they are can be used for the long term remedies and this one is we can focus on climate resilient crops so we have determined if the crop we have relate it will continue to supply food and nutrition secured in the future or not so based on the dynamics of climate change and hazards we have to come up with climate resilient crops and even we have to focus on increasing of crop loss insurance because of this heat wave okay so that can be done so this is about the first article in detail so i i discussed in almost all dimensions and here you can see one article that is explosions rock iran us media reports israeli hits so this article is about israel and iran issue so here we are going to see some dimensions so i want to ask you question like whether this attacks between iran and islam may leads to third world war or not please let me know your opinion i want your opinion okay so here the issue is 
Okay, first let me write the title. So this article is regarding Iran, Israel relations. So what happens? So nowadays Iran and Israel relations are very very low. So in Israel they have Hamas. Okay, so not Hamas. So in Israel, Israel is having issue with this Palestine. In Palestine, we have this Hamas. So actually, Iran which is supporting this Hamas. Okay, Iran is supporting Hamas. And here, what is the issue here is, Israel attacked Iran first. Because Iran is supporting Hamas. So Israel started attacking this Iran. And in that Iran attack, nine important people, even journalists, they died. And... And what happened? Iran attacked Israel. And at that time, Israel said that you already attacked me. So, I retail, in retaliation, I attacked you. So, if you are attacking me in return, then the scenario will be like unimaginable. So, like that, Iran gave warning. But instead, Israel attacked Iran once again. Okay, once again. So, one city has been attacked by Israel. Okay, so that city is very important for Iran because it is having military and development, everything, science and technology related development which is happening in that city and that city which had been attacked by Israel. And we have to see like what will be the further retaliation or action, whether it leads to World War Three or not. Okay, so this is the thing. Okay, so here if you see why it is in news? So, Iran state media reported explosions in the central province of Isaf, Isfahan. Okay, Isfahan is the area where it is very important. So, in this Isfahan area, attack happened. So, US media quoted officials as saying Israel has carried out only retaliatory strikes against its arch rival. Arch rival. So, US is supporting again Israel here. So, US is saying that yes, Israel attacked Iran's province of Isfahan, but it is in retaliation. So, here you can get one question like Isfahan province is located in which city, which country? So, like that they will give you pairs 1, 2, 3. For example, Quito, Quito is present in which country? And uh, Isfahan is present in where? Uh, and next one is Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia country that is Nagarno Karabakh region so like that they will arrange the places or cities which are in news and they will ask like which of the following are current pairs only one pairs only two pairs only three pairs none so like that they can give the question so in this way you have to remember is for harm which is located in which country okay so in that way you have to see and if you move on so leave the city page and today's page is uh, today's paper is entirely you can see like advertisements so i got headache after seeing those <laughs> advertisements so what is this so now it is uh, hindu is becoming very commercial like that i got that thing inks yes if you move on see here entirely advertisements So most of the articles are political articles. You can directly move on to this editorial page. So here in this editorial page, so this article is BJP Southern push was evident in run up to first phase. So we are not going to see this. It is a political article. And next one is Israel, a two state solution, some recent perceptions. So here you have to see this keyword. What is this two state solution? So, I will give you some ideas, okay, dimensions. So, it is talking about two-state solution. So, you have to know like for uh, which subject it is important from, for, from which subject. The first one here is uh, from GS paper to international relations. So, this topic is important and you can expect question from your mains, not from prelims here. And you have to see analysis basic things here. So first one is you have to understand what is this two state solution. So what are the challenges to implement this 
what are the challenges and you have to see like what is the way forward you have to see like what is the way forward so all these are very important okay so now let us see the notes so if you're talking about two state solution what is it it refers to like resolution of dispute or conflict between which so here israel and palestine so this two state solution it is a proposed resolution to this israel palestine conflict that envisions establishment of two separate and independent states one for israelis and another for palestinians so one is for israel and one is that is israel and next one is palestinian living side by side that two with peace and security so this is the meaning of this two state solution so if you are preparing for other examinations you can get a uh, question like uh, two state solution is in use between which and which countries okay so to resolve which and which countries uh, which on which conflict because palestine is uh, not at recognized by all countries okay so that is palestine and israel and next one is challenges in achieving the solution so what are the challenges in in getting the solutions of this resolving of this conflict so why we are not implementing this the first and the foremost thing here is there are some security concerns so because of terror attacks particularly these hamas are present in palestine they are militant based organizations and they cause significant security concerns for israel and these attacks they erode trust and because of this attack now it is it is becoming very difficult okay very difficult for israelis to support concessions and next one is next one is internal political division next one is internal political division so palestinian territories they are divided between west bank okay which is governed by palestinian authority and next one is gaza gaza strip which is controlled by hamas so there is political divisions which are hindering the ability of palestinians to negotiate and to implement unified peace agreement because normally these palestinians they live in these two areas gaza strip and west bank so west bank is under control of palestinian authority but this gaza strip is under control of hamas so again there is like instability and next one is settlements so israel continued construction of settlements in the west bank it is a major point of contention between this israel and palestinians so palestinians they view that these settlements as a violation of their territorial rights and even there is a threat to viability of future palestinian state and if you are talking about what the measures that can be taken to achieve the solution so first one is we have to halt settlements expansion so we have to halt settlement expansion so israel should halt settlement expansion in the west bank as a confidence building measure and we have to address the issue issue is very much crucial to demonstrate a genuine commitment to peace okay and next one is we have to focus on regional powers we have to engage even some regional powers to present like countries to sharing boundary with this israel for example jordan and egypt and even saudi arabia it is like power of sunni right so here like that we have to include like regional powers so that they can make negotiations and that will be helpful for normalizing of relations and establish peace and security in that region and this one is cease fire and confidence building measures so both sides they have to commit to and they have to enforce a long term cease fire to halt violence and we can take like some confidence building measures okay for example like releasing of prisoners humanitarian assistance or aid and joint economic initiatives like that we can come and next one is people to people initiatives like we can encourage civil society organizations and we can also focus on cultural exchanges and we can also improve like come up with educational programs being israelis and palestinians together and we can understand and we have to build bridges so in this way we have to focus and we can come up with a solution for this issue 
and if you move on to this editorial page so there is one more article which is very important so it is about permanent status so again this article it is regarding this israel and palestinian we are going to see that and apart from this there is one important article here is scientist and a wish list for incoming government like for the next government it is formed at the central level so what are the steps that can be taken especially from the science and technology point of view that is given here so these are like personal opinions the personal views of this professor so if you have time you can go through that okay so now let us see this article that is about unsc resolution so here one more important areas that you have to focus is about united nation security council and there is a high chance of getting question regarding this united nation security council this year in your prelims okay unsc and again this topic which is important from your international relations which comes under gs paper 2 so here you have to see like what is this united nations security council and you have to see like who are the members so if you know the members then only the present article that you can understand so we have permanent members and we have temporary members so we have temporary members and we have permanent members so permanent members are like p5 five permanent members and temporary members will be 10 members which are having tenure of 2 years and one important interesting thing here is out of this p5 us is one of the country and these p5 countries they are enjoying this veto power so because of this veto power it is used by us which is supporting israel here so this is one cause of concern okay so this is the issue which is discussed in this article so us is enjoying veto power and it is helping israel so now let us see this article in detail so as concerns about the conflict by design or by miscalculation between israel and iran so they are growing stronger and the news of united nation security council so here the news regarding this united nation security council reservation resolution so this resolution which is focusing on granting full member status for this palestine at united nations but it is not allowed by us because us is enjoying veto power and the resolution which had been proposed by algeria okay it has been proposed by algeria it was one more step at the world's body to attempt to make good on promise made in 1947 so at that time here united nation general assembly originally adopted a resolution so this resolution partitioning the then um, mandated palestine into two states one is jewish and one is arab so it had made in 1947 and if this resolution is passed then we are making the justice after very long to this but now it had been vetoed by us actually if you see on another side israel israel is like a full member of united nation 1949 itself and the question of this palestine which has been tossed around for decades and even though the status of this uh, palestine to be the member full member it has not been got it but in 2012 it got observer status in united nations okay so this is the one thing that you have to remember and vetoing of this united nation security council resolution it has been supported by 12 out of 15 united nation security members and you have said that palestine should not be granted this full member status okay so that is the thing which mainly said so here we have to see like in to maintain international rules based order so here i already know that us it is a global leader so it should endeavor to build and it should not bring it should not break the consensus in order to favor of one country it is doing favor to israel it should not do like that so this is the type this is the like conclusion of this article and now let us move on to our hindu again so today is saturday there is ground zero so there is no need of going through this ground zero and if you move on to this news page so in this page there are many articles which are important we are going to see those articles
Okay, let us see one by one. So first one is forest in national asset and major contributor to financial wealth, say Supreme Court. Supreme Court gave judgment regarding Forest Conservation Act of 2023. Yes, now let us see some interesting things. So recently in 2023, so we have Forest Conservation Act. So we have this Forest Conservation Act of 2006 and in 2023 we came up with amendments and later on it became Forest Conservation Act Amendment Act of 2023. So actually there is one petition which filed regarding this discrimination which is done by this Forest Conservation Act of 2023. So, because of this, finally, Supreme Court gave its verdict and we are going to see this verdict. That's it. Okay. So, this article is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. And even it will be having impact on society, especially tribals. You are also the part of our society. Yes. Yes. Now, let us see why it is in news. The judgment comes at a pivotal time. When the controversial Forest Conservation Amendment Act of 2023 has attracted wide spread of criticism. So actually this Forest Conservation Act of 2006 had been amended. So now you are calling it as Forest Conservation Amendment Act of 2023 and now it is criticized. Okay and now court says the concept of carbon credit and green accounting to evaluate national wealth okay so now let us see what exactly supreme court said so supreme court said in the judgment that forest in india they are natural asset or national asset so they are the assets of our country and they are the major contributor to the nation's financial wealth so if you are having forest then only we can maintain proper climate proper environment proper biodiversity and balance everything right so, if you are going for deforestation, it will be all affected. So, this is the meaning of the statement. And next one is, it is the spirit of the forest that moves the earth. So, bench, the Supreme Court bench had been headed by Justice M.M. Sudhir, uh, Sudresh. And in this judgment, here Supreme Court observed that appeal filed by state of Telangana against High Court decision that is graciously gifting forest land to a private person so is it right to give a forest land to a private person as a gift no right so this is about the case which had been filed and in this judgment in this judgment which came at a pivotal time when this controversial forest conservation amendment act is in news so actually here Supreme Court will be giving judgment like by combining two or more cases which are very relevant. Okay. So here in this 2023 act it is accused that giving a free hand to states to regularize encroachment in protected forests and determine the diversion of forest lands. So actually so one thing which is written in this 2023 forest conservation act is yes we are giving power to states. Okay, regarding regularizing of encroachments and to determine the diversification of forest land. So, the, here states have the power. So, this act has been criticized for paving a way for commercial exploitation of forest. So, when this type of provisions are there in the act, what happens? That will lead to commercial uh, exploitation. So, that is the thing which is mainly the criticism of this 2023 act. And even depletion and disappearance of forest that would ultimately leads to massive extension of organisms okay, so now when there is no forest where we can see like flora and fauna they will be like existing extincting and this one is the court said that the concepts of carbon credit and green accounting so we have to use them to evaluate the nation's wealth okay so then only our nation wealth it goes to become a reality and the country with excess forest cover would be in a position to sell its excess carbon credit to one in deficit. Okay, so in this way we can also trade this green uh, or like green credits or the carbon credits. So judgment which also said that Indian forests are served as a major sink of carbon dioxide and this forest will helpful for the value of mitigation of 
around around dollar 5 per ton of co2 locked in the forest so because of this they are very rich wealthy resources or national resources so court also said that from this 2009 report the ministry of environment and forest tightened india's forest and tree cover contribution as a carbon sink which said that from 1995 to 2005 the carbon stocks stored in our forest and trees they have increased from 6245 million tons to 6662 meters and registering an annual increment of 38 meters of carbon or 138 meters of carbon dioxide equivalent and india could lose any way around 3 percentage of 10 percent of its gdp annually by year 20 or uh, 2100 due to climate change so because of this climate change we are also going to lose our economy so report of rbi which also said that enormous potential impact of climate change it is seen on society that will lead to job loss in every sector okay so in this way here these are the some important points in the judgment of supreme court and if you see here so in this same page itself there is one article that is committed to implementing ucc says rajnath singh so we are not going to see any political thing but we have to see one important topic that is ucc what is this ucc okay what is this ucc ucc is nothing but uniform civil code ucc is nothing but uniform civil code so here this uniform civil code is very important this year from your prelims and mains because uttarakhand because uttarakhand it became the first state in independent india to implement this ucc but before independence goa go already have this ucc so because of this this is a news and there is a high chance of getting question regarding this so if we talk about this ucc you have to understand what is the meaning of ucc and you have to see like what are the constitutional provisions like what are the provisions in our constitution which talks about this ucc and you have to see like what is the need to implement this ucc and what is the significance or outcome so all these all important areas that you have to focus okay so now let us see the notes part so here you can see the context that is uniform civil code what it refers it is a single law it is a single law for the entire country and it is applicable to all religious communities in their personal matters for example like marriage divorce inheritance adoption etc okay so regarding the personal matters like marriage divorce ir- ir- uh, inheritance and adoption so in all these cases we have a single law irrespective of community they belongs to either they belongs to hindu or christians or islam like that and it is intended to replace a system of fragmented personal laws which currently govern interpersonal relationships and related matters within the different religious communities okay so it is intended to replace like where if some communities are having their own laws or for example hindu code etc but they are going to be replaced and this one is constitution of india we are having some provisions we should directly talk about ucc so first and foremost one is article 44 article 44 of our indian constitution which says that which says that state shall endeavor to secure uniform civil code for the citizens throughout the territory of india and this one is article 44 is one of the dpsp so where is this dpsp present in part 4 of indian constitution and actually they are also defined in article 37 like it is not justiciable in manner 
and even it is not enforceable by any court. And these principles they are consisting of all idols which state should follow and which state, which state should keep in mind while formulating policies and enacting the laws of the country. And if I talk about the present status of this personal laws in India, so here we have like different law subjects. For example, like marriage, divorce, inheritance. So they comes under normally concurrent list of our the constitution. Okay, so both parliament and state, they have the power to make the laws. Okay, which are present in this concurrent list. So Hindu personal laws, they have been codified into four parts. For example, we have Hindu Marriage Act, Hindu Succession Act, Minority and Guardianship Act, Hindu Adoption Maintenance Act. Okay, and apart from this, if you see this term Hindu, for example, it includes like Sikhs, Jains, Buddhist, and, and actually here, we are also having some other separate laws for these also. Like for example, Muslims. So, Muslim have their Muslim personal law, they are not codified, okay. But Hindu law, it is codified, but Muslim law or Islam law, it had not been codified. And actually, the Muslim personal law, it is based on their own religious text, okay. Though there are certain aspects of those expressly recognized in acts such as Sharia Application Act and Dissolution of Muslim Marriages Act, and they have Muslim Women Protection of Rights and Maintenance Act of 2019. And even other uh, religions like Christians, Zoroastrians and the Jews, they are also guard, uh, guided or governed by their own personal laws. So why we need this uniform civil court? Because a uniform civil court would provide equal status to all citizens irrespective of religions you are belonging to. Yes, the first one is so they are going to have the equal status. And this one is personal laws are different from different religions. So they are widely divergent. So because of this, there is no consistency in issues like marriage, divorce, adoption, etc. So because of this, it is like violating Article 14 of Indian Constitution, which is saying about right to equality. And this one is personal laws because they derive from the, their own tradition, their own custom. So, it is also having advantage it is given to the men. So, that there is right to equality for equal uh, for women and men has been violated here. And next one is Muslim men being allowed to marry multiple wives but women being forbidden from having multiple husbands. So, in this way here yeah, there is no equality for men and women. There is discrimination of women which is happening. And next one is men who are fathers are also treated as natural guardians. And they are given preference under Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act. But women, they are not. So because of this, we need this UCC to, uh, to make consistency in the society. And even to make gender equality in society, we need this. And next important article here is, even yesterday's class also we discussed about this India-Philippines relations regarding South China Sea issue, right? So again, there is one article regarding the extension of studies article that is India delivers first batch of Brahmos supersonic missiles to Philippines. To Philippines, India delivers first batch of Brahmos supersonic missiles. So now let us see this article and this article is very important from your international relations and even from your science and technology point of view. So, if you see the context, why it is in news? India delivered its first batch of Brahmo supersonic cruise missiles to Philippines. So, please revise today's class. I discussed about what is missiles and what are the different categories of missiles. For example, based on their range, based on their strategic location, based on their uh, fuel, and based on their that trajectory mode that is movement or path okay like that there are different classifications and even based on their launching like whether they are launching from air or surface or land okay like that so here you have to see like different classification of missiles and it is supersonic means the speed will be more than obviously the speed of sound that to five times Okay, more than 5 max speed that is called as supersonic. 
Okay, we have subsonic, supersonic and hypersonic. Sorry. So here if you see the speed here, so we have subsonic, supersonic and next one is hypersonic. Subsonic means less than 1 mac. It is 1, 1 mac. And supersonic means 1 to 5 mac. And hypersonic means more than 5 mac. Okay, so it is supersonic. It will come under the second category. So now let us see the details. In January 2022, Philippines, they concluded $375 million deal with India for three batteries of three uh, shore-based and anti-ship variant of Brahmos. Okay, it is going to become the first export consumer of joint venture missile. So, as of this Brahmos, it is not only India's, but even it is like a joint venture between India and Russia. So, there is a visit to Philippines in March here. Finance Minister, he made a statement that we are going to ensure or we are going to uphold rules-based international order because there is issue in South China Sea between China and Philippines. Okay. So, regarding this, we had discussion in yesterday's class and we are not going to see that. Okay. And here India also gave assurance like we can promote peace and as well as security in this Indo-Pacific region. And in January 2022, Philippines Defense Secretary, they had signed a contract like they have to get world's fastest supersonic cruise missile BrahMos, and it will be helpful for deterrence against attempt to undermine sovereignty. So they want to maintain sovereignty. Because they are always having the fear from China, right? So for that, they asked for their supersonic cruise missile and the first batch had been reached the Philippines. And there is a chance of getting question regarding this Brahmos. So Brahmos, it is a joint venture between DRDO and NPOM of Russia. And Brahmos is named on the rivers that is River Brahmutra and next one is Moscow. And it is a multiple uh, platform missile. That can be launched from land or air or sea and it is having like a multiple or multi capability uh, missile. So it is also having like a pinpoint accuracy and even it operates on this fire and forget principle. So it does not require any further guidance once the launch had happened. So BrahMos is one of the fastest cruise missile currently operating and deployed and the speed here is like 2.8 Mach that will be around three times the more the speed of the sound and recent year advanced version of uh, Brahmos okay which had been fire tested because India had entered into this MC uh, MTCR that is missile technology control regime in 2016 after that we plan to extend the range here more than the already the existing one okay so this is about this topic and these are the very important topics that appeared in our newspaper. And let us hunt for other articles. So I discuss this topic of Brahmos. Yes, and here you can see one important article that is fossils of huge prehistoric snake found in Kutch mine. So in one mine that is lignite mine. So it is a mine of coal. So they found one fossil, okay, so fossil. So here in this region, they found the fossil, okay. And actually this fossil, it is like a very huge prehistoric snake. So researchers at this IIT Rukri have reported discovery of fossils of one of the largest snakes that ever existed and had lived around 47 million years ago during the period called as Middle Eocene. And this fossil which has been found in Kutch, Gujarat and it is a reptile and the name here is Vasuki Indicus. Okay, so Vasuki Indicus. So it is around 10 meters to 15 meters long. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said that's it. And leave this election page, it is not at all useful. And here in this page... I didn't found much, nothing much important. You can leave this. And in this business page, also there is nothing much important in today's page. Okay. 
Okay, that's all. And here you can see one article. So this article is United Nations warns of violence in Myanmar's Rakhine state. So you know that like these people, they are persecuted minority. Like these are the Rohingyas. So you can get a question like minorities and which countries they are belonging to. So in this way also you can get a question because Hamas in news, because of Rohingyas in news and other like Uyghurs in news so that you can get this type of question. So intense fighting in Myanmar's Rakhine state poses grave threat to civilians. So this is the thing it said by United Nations gave a warning. Okay. So United Nations human rights chief said clashes between military and Arakan army along with the along with the side tensions being fueled between Rohingyas and ethnic uh, Rakhine communities. They were meant with a serious risk to repeat for the previous atrocities. So here you have to know the community and which province and which country they belong to. That's it. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. And I am going to end with this today. And I will show you exactly where can you get the notes of this class. So this is our Rathod's IS classes telegram channel. So whenever you are posting video or whenever you are... Uh, want to provide any notes here so we will be providing the notes along with the link of the class there so try to join this telegram channel so that you can benefit it okay and next one is this is our Rathod's Ice Academy YouTube channel so don't forget to subscribe to this channel so this channel is very important to improve your knowledge for sure especially this current effects and next one is this is Rathod's Ice Academy website and Rathod Science is not only providing offline but even online foundation course. So online it is combination of your recorded plus live classes. And the cost of this online foundation for your prelims comments is just 20,000 rupees. Which includes everything. Classes which we are providing the notes in the form of PDF. You will be having mains test series and mains answer rating practice and prelims test series, prelims booster course, everything is included and prices 20,000 rupees only. And if you have any queries, you can call me on this number 8074765513. And even this is WhatsApp and Telegram number also, you can text me there also. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. And if you really like this class, I am giving the link of Google review and rating. So please click that link so that you can give review and rating of this class. Okay, don't forget to give the review and rating. And please do like and share this video to your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to this Rathor Science Academy. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you for your support.